In an application where you'll be using a full-scale database, in other words, one where the user will save data to the database, edit it, modify it, and need to view it. One of the best techniques for doing that is to create a separate database package which creates a modular structure and it creates your classes that you use for working with your database in a separate file and then you can call them from within your other screens or your other activities. So for example, uh, this database I'm going to demonstrate would be an assignment tracker and what we're just going to cover in this part is how to add some records to the database. So we're going to go to add assignment, bring up another activity where we can add content. So after we have some data in here to add in for our assignments, then we can click add assignment and this is going to clear it out, give us a toast message saying it was added and then a link to go back to the main page where we'll be able to view the assignments. Now I haven't set this up to be able to go out and grab the assignment information in here but we'll do a toast so that we can see the records that have been added. So this will give you an idea of how the database will be structured. We're going to have four fields, one for the assignment name, one for the due date, one for the course name or the class name, and another one for notes. So those will be the four fields that will be created in our SQL database. So we'll go back to our Eclipse editor and review the setup that I have so far. Okay, to begin with, I'm gonna open up my assignment tracker Java file, which has the main setup in here. And I'm also going to open up my main XML. Okay, my main XML file, I have a button set up with the ID of add. So it's set up in my Java file so that it has an on-click listener. So we're getting the value of the button. We have an on-click listener that starts a new intent and the new intent is the add assignment class. And the add assignment class is what's going to open up the add XML view which has our edit texts in here for our name, the due date, the course or class, and then the notes. And then the add assignment button here, right, is called the ID for it is add assignment and it's set up with an on click so that it will do the add assignment method in the add assignment Java file. View assignments has an on click to do a view assignments method which will load back to the main XML page. Okay, let's look at the Java file again. And it's set up with the standard on create and it loads the main layout and we have our button listener that opens up the add assignment activity. And then down here we have some code that's related to working with our database. Now, to work with this, I have a lot of it commented out because we're going to go in and do a little bit at a time. But to work with this, we have another file that we are accessing for some of these methods like the open method and insert record and get all records. Those are contained in a separate Java file called DB Adapter. So if I open up the DB Adapter Java file, a lot of developers will use this modular structure. So we're creating a section of constants that will be used in our application. So these include things like the names of our fields. So our ID is going to be our primary key or unique identifier. And then we'll have our other fields from our form for the assignment title, the due date, the course name, and their notes. And then we also have a tag and string in here for when we go to do a log.d to display things to the console. And then also some constants for the database name and the table name in the database and also the version of the database. We're also creating a string that will create the database if it's not already created. So this actually is an SQL statement 
that will create a table if it doesn't already exist called assignments and the fields that it will add will be an ID which will be an integer and it's the primary key and it's going to auto increment meaning every time a new records added it's going to add another value to the ID it's also going to create a field called title and it's going to be variable characters can't be null it can't be empty so we're requiring a title to be in there due date is the date type course is also variable characters and notes is variable characters we'll be using this to create a table if it doesn't already exist when we open our database now down in this section we are working with a class called database helper which extends the SQL light open helper and that's what some of this content is up here is getting these settings so that we can use them in this other class. So our database helper class is going to encapsulate our database interactions. In other words, the things that our database is going to use is going to be stored in here and then we can refer out to it. So we have things like uh, on create to create a database called DB. So we can see here the exec SQL command like we had in the other example. It's going to do a database create which was, which refers to our SQL string that we had up here to create the table in the database. And if it's not able to, to give us the error message as to why. Also a part of this SQL Lite Open Helper, we're extending that class. The SQL Lite Open Helper implements the best practices for creating and opening and even updating databases. So again, this helps hide the logic through the rest of our Java files by encapsulating it all into this one. Now this on upgrade, if we needed to upgrade the database within the device, this is the process that will happen. So right now it's just going to do a log to warn saying upgrading a database from a previous version and um, it's going to destroy all old data, which is a scary thing, right? It's going to, the SQL statement is going to drop the table if it exists called assignments. So this is not the best way to handle this because you don't want the user to lose all of their data. Instead, you should create a new table and then move the contents of this existing table into that new table and then drop the old one. So if an upgrade warrants that, then move the data before deleting it. But we're not going to get into that in this example, but just be aware of uh, that's an option instead of deleting what's already there. So again, the SQLite Open Helper gives us methods for opening the database. So we're going to have a database called DB, and it's going to get a writable database. When we're finished working with the database, we can use the close method to close the database. And then we have some methods in here for working with specifically with this particular database. Uh, we have an insert record, which will take the values of string and due date and course and notes. Now we create initial values and assign some initial values to them so when the database first opens, they have something in there. And then we, we have a method for deleting a record, and it's going to be doing that by the ID of the row, which is going to be the key that will match our primary key. Get all records will help us to get everything that's in the table. And again, you can see that we're using our constants in here to get the values. If we wanted to get a specific record, then we have a method in here to get a record that matches a specific ID. And then to update a record, we're changing the values of what, is, what exists in there and updating it with the new information. So as we said, in this example, we're just going to look at getting it to add a new record. And then we will look at using a toast just to be able to see that we were able to successfully add a new record. So I'm going to go to my assignment tracker Java file. So as we said before, on create, it gets the main XML file, inflates that, 
and then so that displays our add assignment button and the button right now just clicks to go to the add assignment class and that inflates the add XML layout so we'll move down here to this section where we're actually opening or accessing the database let me make this larger so that we have a little more screen space to work with okay so here we're looking for the path to our database so it's a destination path and we saw in an earlier previous video that um, it's looking for the data data folder the name of your package the databases folder and then this is the name of your database so it's checking to see if it exists and checking to make sure that it can access the database and open it up. Okay, now down here I have a section for adding the assignment and it's commented out right now. So I'm just going to uncomment it and I also need to uncomment this DB adapter so that this is what is going to allow us to access the methods that we just had in the DB adapter class that we just looked at. So it's going to open the database and now we're going to use that database to insert a record. So this insert record is in the DB adapter class and it's taking strings. So we're going to give it some string information for the name of, or the title of the assignment, the date, the course, and some notes. And so we're going to do that twice. We're going to insert two different records. Okay, our insert record method returns the ID of the inserted row. So when this row is inserted, it's going to have an ID, which is the ID, the primary key in our database. So it's going to return this back here. If it's unable to insert it for any reason, then it's going to return a negative one. There's a section in here to get all records. Since we're going to have more than one record, Let's see if we can view them all. So I'm just going to uncomment that. Again, it's going to open the database and it uses the cursor to get the value of the records and we're going to use the get all records method, which is in the DB adapter class. And there's also a display record method, which is down here. And display record creates a toast and we're getting the ID and the title of the assignment and the due date and we're going to display it in a, in a short toast. So I'm going to save this and let's run it. And then here are our samples that we just had in our app. So that's an example of adding data to the database. And then here we have one getting them back out and just displaying them in a toast so that we can see that that piece work. Now to create a full-blown application for the user to add and edit and delete and view the records, probably we'll be breaking things out into different activity screens. So for example, I have the add screen. So rather than doing it programmatically, we want the user to dynamically be able to go in here and put in their information and add it to their assignment. So this activity is set up with add assignment class file. And basically this is set up so that it is importing the DB adapter class. Again, that has the functionality for the database in, in it. The button add assignment is connected to this. So when they're in this screen and they click add assignment, right this on click add assignment is the method that is in the add assignment java file so that's what's going to call this now originally i just started with being able to log stuff to the console to see yeah that it got here after the button was clicked and this syntax should look familiar this is getting the ids of the edit texts and then we're using the db open from the db adapter we're inserting records and so to insert the records we're getting the name text each of these we're using the get text method and we're converting it to a string because remember even though it's an edit text the value in here is not automatically a text string so we're taking those edit texts 
and we're getting the value and converting it to a string and then putting it in. And then here we're closing the database. And once we're finished, we're setting the values of those edit texts to empty so that it looks to the user like something happened. And then we're also doing a toast. So to demonstrate how that part works, let me bring up my emulator again. Okay, now that I have some information in my form, I can click Add Assignment. All right, it says Assignment Added. It clears this out. Now we're going to go back to the main page, and then we have we still have these going through. And here is the last one I just added. And it added the other ones again because in the original tracker, right, these were still not commented out, so it added these a second time. So that's an overview. And again, if you wanted to extend this further, you would want to create a separate screen or on your main screen set up probably a list view that showed all of a list of different records from here. Maybe put them in a scroll so that you can scroll up and down through everything in the list. Uh, be able to access them from here to edit them or delete them. But in this example, we were just showing you how to add data to your database and then be able to view the information.